Welcome back. It's time for our Monday markets. And since uh, the focus around global news has been on the death of the Queen, I thought that we'd focus on all things British tonight, including the British pound. So let's take a look. The pound sterling, in fact, rose to its highest level this month after reaching parity a while back. Uh, one pound now buys $1.17. Uh, and you can see that's up by more than a percent. This was a short while ago. If you're interested or, or you want to be miserable one pound buys 20 rand or so at the moment by the way now the pound rose today despite data showing that Britain's economy grew less than expected in July and in fact there are some indications that the UK may already be in a recession inflation hit a 40-year high of more than 10 percent this year and Brits have been struggling with the high cost of living electricity prices already climbing by more than 50 percent in July in a year which is incredible the pound however is reacting to a weaker dollar and general risk on sentiment. The markets rose today as well and investors took their positions ahead of a crucial inflation report in the United States. Now let's return to the Yachesfontein mine disaster in the Free State. Yachesfontein was one of the biggest diamond mines during colonial and apartheid times. In 2010, De Beers sold it to a BEE company uh, called Super Cologne Consortium. The Itumalang Community Trust was later formed to distribute earnings gained from the mine and the tailings, which is processed earth basically that may still contain diamonds. That was held in the dam and that we saw that dam was collapse. Star Gems Group in Dubai acquired Yachas Fontein Holdings. Well, what happened is reminiscent of the Mary Spray Tailings Dam disaster in 1994. That left 17 people dead. And last year, chemicals contaminated uh, the Ohlanga River. So this is certainly not an isolated event. Let's talk to S uh, Tsepo Mangwai, SABC's uh, News' economics editor, about the bigger picture. Thanks for being with us on a Monday as usual, it's Tsepo. Um, so what is the bigger picture here? Because this has happened before, so the spotlight will be on all the government departments mm -hmm. involved, as well as the mine owner, of course. I think, uh, firstly, there is a lot of injustice, especially for the people of Jagger's Fontaine. Think about it. Um, there's been mining activity in the area since 1898. Uh, there's Excelsior Diamond. Uh, it's renowned. It was found there. Uh, decades long of uh, mining activity in the area. You look at poverty in the area. Uh, mining activities almost come to a standstill. There isn't much happening yeah. there. But what are the people left with? You know, disaster. A problem, you know, a big problem. Huge yeah. disaster. Um, there were BEE deals. I mean, you've alluded to a, a BEE deal that was made. They were promised a 10% stake in, in, in that entity. Have they really benefited from, from that deal? And now they have to mm -hmm. deal with this particular disaster. So it's, it, it's a concern. The, the other issue, there's been a lot of secrecy around, the, around this particular deal. Um, uh, you and I were speaking earlier, I mean, the, the mine was decommissioned in 1972. Uh, and then after De Beers continued with the operations. Now the question is, is there a mining license that De Beers were operating under? Is there any mention of a mining license that is currently held? Of course, yeah. you know, uh, we understand that the new buyers, when they came in, they were going to process what's left of diamond in those mining dams uh, and that's the reason probably you know why uh, they've kept those mine dams despite you know uh, posing a significant uh, risk to it but I mean De Beers, De Beers have, uh, they've been mining for, 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 for the longest time in, in that particular area so there, there are a whole lot of issues um, uh, that are concerned how much that's another issue that emerged in 2010 when the BS sold uh, the, 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 the asset, um, there was a lot of secrecy around how much they might have paid for, for the asset. Uh, there are a whole lot of numbers that, that have been bandied around. Uh, and then there's issue around 720 million rent in bond auction that was raised, mm -hmm. probably, you know, to develop the mine. But it's very clear that the process of retrieving diamond from those mining dams must be extremely expensive. And I'm sure um, when the mine was sold, you know, they were aware of, of the challenges that, that, that they are facing. 
So, so let's look at Groundwork Friends of the Earth, South Africa, says if government is serious about a just transition, De Beers and their subsidiaries must be held accountable and pay for the cleanup and full rehabilitation, maintenance and closure of the mine. Now, let's be clear. We don't know exactly what the deal involved, or how government it was involved and what state the mine was handed over, if it was done lawfully. We cannot assess any claims against De Beers. But there have been a lot of claims that the big mine Miners, once they finish with a mine, hand it off to junior miners, BEE miners, uh, people with mainly, like you say, the capital to start, not realizing the resources they will need to maintain that mine going forward. And you could say, well, if you buy something, uh, you know, cross mm. your eyes, do your own due diligence. Uh, but certainly there, there must be some sense of, of justice, like you say, around how those deals are done. And, and it's not the first time it's been raised. Francis, the reality is most of our mines are very, very old. And the older the mine, the difficult it is to mine. It costs a lot of money to mine, uh, to, to carry out any activity in those mines. So you do have instances where people with very little experience who are, who are just exploring you know, business opportunities in the mining uh, sector go in. There are mines that have been around for many years they are battling and then they go under business rescue or they get liquidated. And then one of the issues that has been raised repeatedly is does the liquidation and business rescue make prov provision for rehabilitation? And in most instances it doesn't. Yeah. And that's where the problem is. So when the process unwind and there are problems, I mean we've had a lot of mines that have gone down stripped of their assets. And um, you know, and many of those mines have yeah. not been saved. Uh, and the toxic water, that's the problem. It can seep into the ground, it can spread into communities, it can go into, into the groundwater. We're, we're running out of time, but the, the facts here will certainly become clear, hopefully, about the deal in 2010. The mine will be held responsible and we'll look at how government acted. But you said earlier that there are some mines out there that aren't even owned. We don't know who to, to hold responsibility for, for what. Uh, absolutely. Um, apparently according to the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy, there are about 6,000 ownerless mines that we have and they urgently need to be rehabilitated. The so, so there's a looming disaster. The department says they probably would need about 40 billion rent. They currently get about uh, 40, uh, 140 million rent. And sure. then you've got a problem of illegal miners who go back to those rehabilitated mines and they destroy the concrete slabs that have mm -hmm. been covering the whole area and the entrance. They use uh, very expensive and so complicated... So these are the Zamazamas that want exactly. to go back in and, and Explosives. restart the mine. They, yeah. And then they find way into those mines. And after spending so much man, money to cover those mines, and then we're back to square one. So it's a big problem uh, that we are facing in the country. Sure. Uh, th that is a lot. 40 billion, you said. And that's 40 billion. Wow. Right, yeah. Uh, what government is saying just to, to fix those ones that are potentially also um, a, a potential problem. That was Sepo Mangwai, SABC News' economics editor.